Hey everyone! I know it has been forever since I posted. In fact, it's been so long that I got an email from YouTube saying that if I don't post anything new, they'll remove my monetization. And while I do not make hardly any money from my YouTube videos because I never post any, it would be nice to hang on to that. So I'm going to show you how to crochet this very cute shrimp slash prawn. It's a pattern that's been in my Etsy shop for years, and for some reason, month after month, it's my most popular pattern as far as sales. If someone could <laughs> um, explain that to me, that would be great. It's always kind of I, a big question mark to me. I don't know if it's posted somewhere. Um, I know that people make them and say that they're emotional support shrimp. I don't know if that's a thing, uh, but it's very fast, very cute. This will probably be one of my shortest YouTube videos. So let's get into it. I'll be using about 10 yards of a light orange or coral colored light worsted weight yarn. This is Cascade 220, it's wool. This is in the color, it's actually called shrimp. Uh, it's number 7804 for Cascade 220. And whatever yarn you end up using, you'll want to use a hook size that correlates with that. Um, I think in my pattern I say I work with an H hook, but for a lighter worsted weight, you could also work with a G hook, which is what I have here. So the H would be 5 millimeter, and the G would be slightly smaller at 4 millimeters. You need a pair of scissors. I'm using a tapestry needle. It's just a big needle that has a blunt tip at the end so it's easier to avoid piercing through the yarn when you're weaving in your yarn tails. You'll need a little bit of polyester stuffing. I really like Polyfill brand. And you can do the eyes on your shrimp in any way that you prefer. I like buying these tiny, they're these tiny, I guess you consider them cabochons. They're kind of like safety eyes, except there's no backing on such a tiny piece of crochet. I don't really like to have the post and the backing inside my toy. So I like to super glue on these tiny flat rounds and I don't have the packaging for this anymore, but they kind of look like this. This is the eight millimeter version and this is six millimeter. You could also use black beads or googly eyes or you could embroider your eyes with some black yarn. You can kind of do whatever you like, but if you do use these flat black rounds that I like to use, um, I think super glue is the best way to go for applying those. And again, this makes your eye less safe. I would not use this um, on something I'd make for a baby or a small child, but if it's for a grown-up <laughs> art piece, this is my favorite. The pattern starts on one side or one half of the shrimp and we start at the tip here. We're going to work on I guess what's called a rostrum or an antennule. <laughs> Just the little sticky outy things um, from the front of the shrimp's face. So we're going to work on this part first and then go back and work the body. We work two sides of the body separately, and then when we seam everything together and join the two pieces, we then make the tail at the very end. When you first get out your yarn, you want to give yourself about a six inch yarn tail. You'll be using this for an antenna later. Grab your hook, and we're going to start with a chain seven. So put a slip knot on your hook and chain seven. To chain, you yarn over and pull through one. That's one chain. Yarn over and pull through again. That's the second chain. Three, four, five, six, and seven. Now we'll start with row one. You skip the first chain from your hook and then working in two loops of each chain, you're gonna slip stitch in each chain. So insert your hook into the next chain, pick up two loops of it, not just one, yarn over and pull through all the loops on your hook. And that's a slip stitch. We'll do that again, insert the hook into the next chain through both loops, yarn over and pull through all the loops on the hook. That's two, do the next one. 
three, four, five, and then the very last one is number six. You can see it's a little bit lumpier here. It's where I probably didn't pull through quite as tightly, but you can kind of smush it, <laughs> smush it and sculpt it. Where to begin row two is one of the questions I sometimes get in my Etsy shop. I think it's confusing because we're used to chaining one and turning and continuing to work back and forth in the piece we made going this way, but for the shrimp we're going to keep working on the body going this way. So we want to start row two kind of at the very top of this piece that we just made and for me I'm just going to insert my hook into the same chain that I worked my last slip stitch in. Okay so hopefully that clarifies where row two is gonna go. Row two begins with chain one and work two single crochets right into that very last chain again to single crochet insert your hook where you want to go yarn over and pull through the first loop yarn over and pull through the second loop and that's a single crochet you're going to do one more of those in the exact same place insert your hook yarn over pull through one yarn over and pull through both loops. That's two single crochets and that's all for row two. To start row three, chain one and turn. We're going to keep working upwards in this direction. You're going to work two single crochets in the first stitch. So I'll insert my hook into this first spot, yarn over and pull through one, yarn over and pull through two, and in the exact same spot and then another single crochet yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through two, and in that last stitch of the row you're going to work one single crochet. You should have three stitches at the end of row three. For row four we'll chain one and turn. Just work one single crochet in each stitch across. So it's one, two, and then three. And you should still have three stitches at the end of row four. For row five, chain one and turn. You're going to increase again. So in this first stitch, you're going to work two single crochets. So there's one and then another one in the exact same spot. And then one single crochet in the next stitch and one single crochet in the last stitch. At the end of row five, you have four single crochets. Rows six, seven, and eight are all the same. You're just gonna chain one and turn and work one single crochet in each stitch. One, two, three, and four. That's row six. Two more rows the exact same way. Chain one and turn. One, two, three, and four. One more time. Chain one and turn. One, two, three, and four. You see the shape of the shrimp's head starting to form. For the rest of this pattern, you're going to work in the back loop only. That creates a fun little texture for the shrimp's shell. So we'll chain one and turn to begin row nine. Chain one, turn. Remember, this is all in the back loop only. You're going to work a slip stitch. So normally we would pick up two loops on a stitch. Now we're only working in one back loop. That's the loop farthest away from you. Slip stitch is yarn over and pull through both loops. Don't pull too tightly because we do need to work in this stitch later. So if it's too tight, you won't be able to get your hook in there. 
and then a single crochet in the next stitch, back loop only, just one loop, yarn over and pull through one, yarn over and pull through two, and then two half double crochets for the next two stitches. So half double crochets, yarn over, insert your hook into that back loop only, yarn over and pull through one, yarn over and pull through all three loops on the hook. Do the exact same thing in that last stitch for half double crochet. Yarn over, insert your hook into the stitch, back loop only, yarn over, pull through one, yarn over and pull through all three loops. Your stitch count's the same. It should still be four stitches at the end of row nine. To begin row 10, we're gonna chain two. One, two, and then turn. You're going to work half double crochet in this first stitch. And then single crochet in the next stitch. Still just one loop, that back loop only. And then you're gonna skip one stitch and then slip stitch in the last stitch. Pick up that back loop only. Remember, don't pull too tightly on these slip stitches. So we decreased the number of stitches in row 10. You should only have three stitches now here. One, two, three. For row 11, we'll chain one and turn. You're gonna slip stitch in the first stitch, back loop only, then single crochet. and then half double crochet. Three stitches across. For row 12, we'll chain two and turn, half double crochet, single crochet, and then slip stitch. But that slip stitch gets really tiny, so Try to help your future self by not pulling that slip stitch too tight. There's my last slip stitch of row 12. And for rows 13, 14, and 15, you're gonna repeat rows 11 and 12 and then 11. So back at row 11, AKA row 13, chain one and turn. You're gonna slip stitch, single crochet, half double crochet. Row 14 is the same as row 12, so chain two, turn, half double crochet, single crochet, slip stitch, And row 15 is the same as row 11. Chain one, turn, slip stitch, single crochet, half double crochet. And row 16 is chain one, turn, and single crochet in each stitch. Still in the back loop only. Two, and then that slip stitch can be tricky. Last single crochet. So you should have three stitches. You wanna break off with quite a bit of yarn because we're going to be crocheting with this yarn tail later. So I leave myself about a yard. I would rather have too much than run out. So a nice long yarn tail. And we'll yarn over and pull that yarn tail all the way through. Let's take a look at what we just crocheted. We started here with the rostrum slash centennial and then created the head. And you can see how working in the back loop only for the rest of the body made this fun ridgy texture. And because we worked all half double crochets on one side and all slip stitches on the other, 
that difference in the stitch height created this curve, which is like the curve of the shrimp's body. Pretty cool, right? So go ahead and you're gonna make a second piece of this shrimp body in the exact same way. Oh yeah, don't forget, do not weave in any of these ends. We left a super long tail here for crocheting later. And then this beginning yarn tail is going to be used as an antenna. Here are my two pieces. And in this moment, I'm suddenly realizing I probably could have filmed this tutorial with larger yarn and a larger hook so that you could see these tiny stitches better, but it's a little too late for that. But that was also like a fun experiment for y'all. If you wanted a larger shrimp, just use like a bigger hook and maybe one of those like popular chenille blanket yarns that everyone's making Ami with these days. I'd be curious to see what that looks like. So what we're gonna do is put one on top of another. Now we're just gonna sew these together using one of these really long tails. And we're in the other one we're gonna use for crocheting the tail later. So I'm putting my long tail on my tapestry needle and you can seam this up however you like I just use a whip stitch because it's fast and easy for me for whip stitch I will from back to front insert my needle in the bottom piece and then from back to front insert my needle through the top piece pull through and repeat that again I'll move Maybe like a stitch away, pick up a loop from the back piece, pick up a loop from the front piece. And this piece of yarn is just whipping around the two edges of my two pieces. Keep doing that until you get to up here. As I'm getting close to the top here, just kind of untangling things, making sure my two yarn tails up at the front are both, um, you know, not caught inside and are flowing nicely down in a downward direction. I have a couple more whip stitches to go. I'm just making sure that these pieces are matching up well. And when you get to the little join here, you can't really whip stitch around these flappy pieces. So you can just stab stitch right through the two pieces to make sure that they join in the front and I might stab stitch back out like a stitch away. And then you can continue your whip stitch along the top edge of your shrimp. If it looks like you want this to be a little bit more secure, you can kind of go back and forth again, which I feel like I'm gonna do before I start whip stitching away. But how many stitches you put in here is totally up to you. That feels good. And I'll start whip stitching again, two pieces together. And before you get all the way to the other end, we're going to stuff the head. So I feel like when your whip stitching is finished to about this part, take a pause and stuff the head. Otherwise, if you go all the way to the tail, it might be difficult for you to get the stuffing down there. Grab a little bit of polyfill. This project really doesn't take very much. We don't stuff the tail. It doesn't really need it. You can try if you want, but I think it's a tiny space to stuff, and I don't think it adds to the aesthetic. I think most of the dimension is inside the shrimp's head here. Might do a tiny, like one teeny tiny <laughs> puff ball more. See 
See how you like that? If some of it kind of starts going to the beginning of the tail, that's totally fine. We'll continue whip stitching. These two pieces closed. And as I was looking at my shrimp, I was thinking about why I did not release this pattern for a very long time. Um, there's a part of it that really bothers me. Like, I, ideally if I had some time, I would think about how to perfect this pattern worked in the round. Because when we work back and forth in rows, I wonder if you'll be able to see this on camera. The two sides are different, right? Because of how a back loop only works and it shows on one side and not the other. And so you kind of get the ridge here on this side. But if you turn it, you can see how the ridge starts earlier on this side. They're not symmetrical just by nature of working back and forth in rows and putting these pieces together. So that super, super bugged me <laughs> as far as releasing a pattern because I like them to be perfect. But people were asking for it and I was like, you know, I'm just, I don't have the time to really get this where I ideally would want it. But it's still a totally cute shrimp. Um, I don't think that anyone's complained about it, but I've also never really said that out loud. So there are your behind the scene secrets from a crochet designer. Okay, one last whip stitch here. I'm just gonna leave the opening here unseamed for now because we're gonna crochet those together. So I'll tie a small knot here and then hide this yarn tail inside the shrimp. You weave through a few stitches and then hide this inside. Now we're gonna give our shrimp a tail and this part is also a little counterintuitive. It's not really how we're used to crocheting and it's not where we're used to putting stitches. But what we're gonna do is put your shrimp on its back and have the tail facing you and you're gonna squish the tail this way so we can work the shrimp tail horizontally where the shrimp is like this. This is the bottom curl and there aren't really clear places to put the hook after you've done this. So what we're gonna do is just imagine that there will be two spots in this sort of tube area that you're going to work stitches. You're gonna have your right side and your left side. And as long as you're working through both layers of this tube, it should be fine. So this is how this is gonna go. I'm inserting my hook at the, on the right side of this tube through both layers. And then I'm gonna pull my yarn tail through, I'm gonna yarn over like this. And in this same stitch, we'll work one half of the tail. So it's chain two, one, and two, and then two half treble crochets. It's a pretty long stitch. So yarn over, I guess pretty tall, <laughs> yarn over two times, insert your hook into that same stitch. I'm gonna maybe pick up another loop of this front part of the tail just to make sure I sandwiching both sides of that tube. Yarn over and pull through one. Yarn over and pull through the first two loops. Yarn over and pull through all three loops on the hook. That's a half treble crochet. You're gonna work two, so work one more. Yarn over twice. Insert your hook into the exact same space. Yarn over and pull through one. Yarn over and pull through two. Yarn over and pull through all three loops. Then you'll chain two. One, two. And then slip stitch right back into that same spot. 
So that completes one half of this tail piece. The second half, you're going to imagine a bunch of stitches on the left hand side of your tube here. We're going to slip stitch. So make sure you catch some of the front of the tube and some of the back of the tube. You're going to slip stitch, so yarn over and pull through all the loops. Chain two. Two half treble crochets. And I'm noticing I'm running out of yarn. I was going to just <laughs> fix my boo-boo off camera and not say it out loud, but this might happen to you. So I don't have enough yarn to really complete another half triple crochet. Like it's close. I could maybe sneak it through. Should we try? <laughs> Otherwise you can just attach a new piece of yarn. Let's see, let's see. This is what we call yarn chicken. So here's another, oop, yeah, it's gonna be really hard. Another half treble crochet. We try, chain two, oof, and then slip stitch. It's barely, barely enough. But this is real life, it happens. Can we? Ooh, there's gonna be like no weaving in this end. Okay, don't recommend this, but it's possible. Okay, that's what the shrimp tail looks like. It's pretty cute, right? Okay, I ran out of camera battery and put a new one in and then all of a sudden the screen started flashing like my camera frame rate was messed up. I don't know how to fix it and I've adjusted some other things so hopefully this isn't flickering for y'all. Okay, the other thing that happened was as I was running out of battery I didn't realize I was not recording so I trimmed these front antenna. And at least it's a part that's pretty self-explanatory. You just trim these to about three inches long. If your antenna happened to be pointing upward, just due to how you crochet or how you ended up seaming the pieces, it's really easy to just pop a tapestry needle on the end of here and then poke it through the shrimp's head and just bring it down to the bottom here. The next step is we're gonna give our shrimp some little leggies. So the way we do that is cut off three pieces of yarn that are about six inches long. And we're gonna give him some legs one pair at a time. So I'm gonna thread one of these pieces of yarn on a tapestry needle and then flip them over. And, well, I guess you don't have to flip them over. You can just kind of figure out where you want the three legs. If you want, you can look at a reference photo of one of my shrimp. I start them maybe in this area. Let's see how that might look. I like that. Kind of going through the bottom here. I don't pull this all the way through. I'm gonna push these away. I leave a little bit of length on one side to play with, and on the side that I have my needle on, I'll tie a knot to secure it. Two knots. And you don't really need to tie a knot on the other leg, but I just do. It makes me feel better about the project, but it's not going anywhere. It doesn't need a knot, but you do as you would like here. We'll definitely trim these up, but I like to put all the other legs on first and trim them all at the same time. So I'm threading a second piece of yarn here and imagining where I want my next set of legs to go. Just a little bit down the body here. Maybe that's too close. Like that. Seems good. I like that. And this is sort of your artistic decision. 
And again, I'm going to leave some on the other side to play with. And then secure with a knot here. Oops. I'll secure on the other side. And that's looking like a lot of yarn right now, but it will all make sense very soon. To secure my leg on the other side. And I have one last pair of legs. My last piece of yarn. Let's see. Looking at my shrimp, figuring out where the legs are going to go. Looks kind of like here. That's good. All our shrimpies are going to look a little bit different. And that's okay. And then one final knot on this last leg. And again, how long you leave these legs is up to you. I think in my pattern I say to trim them to about an inch. I'll take my scissors and trim these kind of like this. This is what he looks like right now, and all he needs are some eyes. As I mentioned, there are a few ways to do the eyes, but I'm going to super glue these little six millimeter rounds on. I really like this Loctite gel. This is very, very self-explanatory. So I'll just put a little bit of super glue gel on the back of this eye. I don't want it to ooze out so I don't try to overdo it. Then kind of imagine where you'd like this eye to go. Pop it right on. I like to hold it down for a good like 30 seconds or so just so that I know the plastic is making good contact with the fabric. Is good, and then do the other side. Glue up the second die, and try to make sure it kind of seems like it's in the same spot as the other eye, and then pinch together. And your little shrimpy is all finished. Should we take a tour? We kind of already did take a tour, but this is kind of one of those rare opportunities where you'll get to see this shrimp in 3D as opposed to a picture that's in my pattern. Oh, he's so cute. Look at his sweet face. He's got his two front antennules and his two longer antennae. His cute little leggies. His ridgy shell and curved tail. His little tail flaps. His iconic tail flaps. You are gonna have so much fun making all your little shrimpy friends. Uh, originally I made these for an Australian designer and she turned them into earrings. <laughs> so that's a fun thing that you could do. Um, she sold out her collection and then I asked her if she was okay with me releasing the pattern and she was so that we can all enjoy making more shrimpy friends. Let me know how your little shrimpies turn out and also it's been so long, just let me know how you're doing. In case you're curious, everything over on my end is cool. Since I last posted, I probably had different color hair and different glasses. Um, I still work full time at Creative Bug as an instructor and a content producer, and I love it. What else is new? Um, I adopted a senior dog. He's almost 19. His name is Celery, if you want to check him out. I post him a lot in my stories on Instagram, 
and I love y'all. I miss y'all, and I'm going to try to find more time to make more tutorials. Bye!